Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom, Mosai and Christ bless. It's me, Captain Gideon. You're watching 15 Minutes with the Captains. And to my right, Soldier Nate Sean. Um, today we're going to go through the book of the Romans, specifically chapter 9. Uh, this chapter help you understand the Bible in a nutshell. Uh, we'll see how much of it we can cover in 15 minutes. So, let's get to it. Romans chapter 9, verse 1. The book of Romans chapter 9 and verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen, mm -hmm. for my brethren, mm -hmm. my kinsmen, according to the flesh. According to what? According to the flesh. So Paul said, he wished he could be Christ for us. He could take our burden. Whose burden? His kinsmen. According to the flesh, if you cannot understand that, I'm sorry, there's not much I can do for you. Because my kinsman, according to the flesh, is talking about what? Family members. Nothing else. So the burden he wished to carry is for his family members only. Read. Who are Israelites? Who is his family? Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? Paul was an Israelite. When you read the Bible, give me Acts 22, um, verse 27, actually. Let's see a little something about Paul. Because Paul was an Israelite. Many of you might get that confused, but he was. The book of Acts, chapter 22, verse 27. Uh-huh. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, But I was free born. So stop. You might get confused because you don't read your Bible. It says, Paul just said in chapter 9 of the book of Romans, he was an Israelite. But now you turn to the book of Acts, they ask him, are you a Roman? He say, yeah. Right? Okay, we're coming back to that. Give me Philippians chapter 3. Right? And uh, we're going to start at verse 4 and 5. The book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 4. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he, have, that he hath whereof he must... Excuse me. He might trust in the flesh. I more circumcised the eighth day. Only Israelites were circumcised the eighth day. But Paul just admitted that he was a Roman. Continue reading. Of the stock of Israel. Of the stock of Israel. But he just admitted he was a Roman. Read. Of the tribe of Benjamin. He even give you his tribe. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Circumcised the eighth day. Of the Israelites. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Read. And Hebrew of the Hebrews. As touching the law, a Pharisee. So he was a top, top notch Hebrew. A Pharisee. That means that dude studied the law. Born in it. But yet he said he was Roman. How can that be? No. It's very simple. Just like today. You might be of Haitian descent. And you was born here. You call yourself an American. But you ain't a Haitian. You follow? It's just citizenship. He was a Roman citizen. But by race he was an Israelite. Make that very clear. Let's go back to Romans 9. Whose are the fathers? Read the verse 4 again. Verse 4. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? So who are Israelites? That's the people he want to carry the burden for. To whom pertaineth the adoption? Let me read it again. To whom pertaineth the adoption? What is the adoption? 
Christ coming across and dying for us. To adapt us back. The adoption according to the Bible pertained only to the Israelites. Read. And the glory. And the who? And the glory. And the glory. And the covenants. What is the glory? The kingdom. You follow? And the what? And the covenant. Read. And the giving of the law. And the giving of the Lord. So those three things were given to the Israelites. Give me Galatians 4 and 4. We're coming back to Romans, so don't lose it. Yes, sir. The book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, mm -hmm. made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. To do what? To redeem them that were under the law. Read. That we might receive the adoption of sons. We might receive what? The adoption of sons. Oh, my goodness. Christ came, right, of a woman and a man, born under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. Was there at any time that other nations were under the law? No. The law was given to Israel. So which means Christ came to redeem Israelites. To give them back the adoption as sons to the Israelites. You will not find a verse that says the Jebusite kept the law. The Philistine kept the law. The Moabites, the Edomites, the Ishmaelites, the Amalekites. No, you're not going to find a scripture where the law was given to them. But you find a scripture that tells you the gods of the other nations are idols. I'll let you find that on your own. You got to do some research too. It's in song. i give you that much. So understand this. The adoption is for what? The Israelites. Now it says the glory. Give me Psalm 145, verse 11. So it's very clear, people. The Bible says precept must be upon precept. This is why we're going from precept to precept so you can understand further the book of Romans chapter 9. 145, verse 11. The book of Psalm chapter 145 and verse 11. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom. The glory of what? Of thy kingdom. So the glory in the book of Romans is talking about God's kingdom. So the kingdom belongs to the Israelites. How clearer can we get? Was that in that verse? And talk of thy power. So that's it on that. Uh, go back to Romans. It says the adoption. We show you that in Galatians. The glory. We, show you, you show, we showed you that in Psalm. And then it says, and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Give me Hebrews 8 and 8. Let's see. Who the law is for? Because many people will be like, well, you know what? The law was given to the Israelites in the Old Testament. But, you know, Christ came and changed that. He made a new covenant. You know, Pastor Porkchop got to talk, got to, got to sound differently. No. Hebrews 8 and 8. The book of Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them. Stop. Finding fault with them. Who's the them? The Israelites. You follow Finding fault with them, with the Israelites, with our forefathers. Read. He saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought the new covenant was with everybody else. I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. The scriptures say, God found fault with our forefathers, and he decided, you know what? I'm going to scratch the old covenant and make a new covenant. But with who? With the whole house of Israel. Not with every nation. Read. Right? And with the house of Judah. And the house of Judah. Who is Judah? Who is Israel? Northern kingdom? Southern kingdom. Read that in the book of Kings. There was a split in Israel. You follow? And you had the kingdom of Judah and the kingdom of Israel. So those are the people that the new covenant was made. Read right on. Verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Stop. So he's making a new covenant with a new people, according to. It said, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers. So the new covenant is being made with the kids of those who are the laws from before, who are Israelites. You gotta stretch that. Because, you know, our people are hard of hearing. I know they're dull of seeing because apparently I know they're not reading. But at least open your ears so you can hear. Their fathers, possessive. It's the same people. Read. Because they continued not in my covenant, 
and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. So because our forefathers did not keep the covenant, Mosai regarded us not and sent us into slavery. But now that we are coming back out of slavery and knowing who we are, oh man, what a blessing. What a blessing to find out we are Israelites. What a blessing to awake and to find out there has been a conspiracy against us to destroy us. It's something else, man. Go back to Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 5. five. Whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came? Whoa. <laughs> concerning who Christ came for? Concerning the flesh, Christ came. Came. Whose are the fathers and of whom concerning the flesh Christ came. Christ came only for the Israelites. Flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood, that's kinsmen, family members. Matter of fact, um, give me Amos real quick. Is it Amos? Amos chapter 3 verse 2. The book of Amos chapter 3 and verse 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. No, God knows everybody. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. This is why Christ came for. Only the Israelites. That's why I say you only have I known. Because if I only know you, why would I be giving something that's meant for you to somebody else? Does that make sense? No. Read on. Therefore, I will punish you. For all your iniquity. This is why when you look at everything that's happening in this world, we are catching it the worst. Worst education. Worst housing. The worst water to drink. The worst food. In every aspect you can look at our lives. Hold on one second. Hebrews 8 and 8. There's something that says uh, in verse 9. Because they continue not in my covenant and I regarded them not said the Lord. So, most I had turned his back against us. This is why we end up in the worst situations possible. Why? Because God is judging us because we turn our back against him. It's time to come back to the Lord's statutes and commandments, understanding that you are an Israelite and the covenant and the glory and the laws and Christ coming back on this earth was only done and only for you. How can you not appreciate that? How can you look that upon that? How can you try to search the Bible to find any scripture that goes against that? That shows you don't believe in the Bible because the Bible is not going to contradict itself. Somebody lied to you, Jack. It's time for you to open your eyes, open your ears, and see and hear and be converted. Go back to Roman 9. The I mean, um, hold on that. Give me Joel 2, actually. Let's show you that a little bit further. 27. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's, 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 that's powerful right there. Read that again. That, that's heavy. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And ye shall know. That means, <laughs> how does it say? Oh, you're going to learn today. You're going to learn today, boy. Read it from the top. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. God said, I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God, and none else. Give me First Chronicles chapter 17, verse 21. Mosai is very clear about that. You're going to learn today. God sent his son Christ to die only for the Israelites. Read the book of First Chronicles, chapter 17, verse 21. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel, whom God went to redeem to be his own people. Wow. Like, how can you find me scriptures that contradict these things? It say, and what nation on this earth is like thy people Israel? Thy people, thy people, possessive. We belong to the Lord God. Okay? Thy people Israel, who God went to redeem to be his own people. Blood was shed for us. Nation was destroyed for us. Realize this throughout the whole Bible. Every time we get delivered, somebody got to die. 
So if every time we get delivered, somebody got to die, how can Christ came to save everybody? Impossible. Read that from the top. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel, whom God went to redeem to be his own people, to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness by driving out nations from before thy people, whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt. So here you go. For Israel to be delivered, nations were driven out. Coming out of Egypt, we did not just destroy the Egyptian. We fought everybody. And after we were done, the Lord left five lords of the Philistines to, to, to teach our children war in the book of Judges. The Lord has always been for us and only for us. The other nations, the Lord is not for them. Give me Psalm 96 verse 5 and we're going to prove it. The book of Psalms, chapter 96, verse 5. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. For all the gods of the who? For all the gods of the nations are idols. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Read. But the Lord made the heavens. But the Lord made the heaven. The nations, they only have other gods. They don't have the main God, our God, the God of Israel. Give me Matthew 15, verse 24. Because you might be like, ah, ah, still fighting. No, remember, we read from, back, from old and new. The Bible said the same thing over and over and over. It's redundant. I don't know why you're not getting this yet. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Christ said with his own mouth, he was only sent. For the house of Israel. And that's something Paul understood very clearly. And this is why he wrote Roman 9. To reiterate that what? The covenant, the glory, and the laws. And the services of God was only given to the Israelites. Salvation is for the Israelites only. And that's what Romans 9 is all about. With that, we say shalom. Shalom. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.